Uh, these are my disclosures. And I'm going to very briefly cover the magnitude of the problem of hepatitis C in Egypt, our uh, elimination targets that we had set. Uh, access to treatment despite our very limited resources in Egypt, the outcome of therapy briefly, and then future challenges. Uh, the, the last National Health Survey in 2015 uh, sh showed that there are almost 5.5 uh, million people with uh, hepatitis C living in Egypt in 2015. Um, the antibody prevalence in uh, men was uh, slightly more than women. And what's important is that the antibody uh, prevalence increases with age, above the age of 40, almost 20% of uh, men and women are infected or positive for uh, hepatitis C antibody. Uh, with 5.5 million uh, patients, Egypt is the fourth uh, country in the world with number of patients after uh, in India, China, uh, and Pakistan, which have much, much uh, more uh, population. And actually, uh, with 5.5 million uh, patients, uh, Egypt has as much uh, patients as all these countries in Europe, all uh, Western Europe, Central Europe, Eastern Europe, excluding Russia and Turkey. So 35 countries in Europe have the same number of patients. So it's a huge problem, and the disease burden is very large. Uh, this results in almost 450,000 uh, disability-adjusted life years uh, annually. The direct health care cost is, is very high, at almost 5% of the total health expenditure on a single disease. And at 3.4 billion total uh, economic burden, this is a very, very uh, large economic burden, which is close to 1.5% of the GDP of Egypt. Uh, in 2013-2014, we set elimination targets. We said that uh, we were planning or hoping to uh, have uh, the national prevalence below, or antibody prevalence below 2% by 2025 and less than 1% or near total elimination by 2030. So uh, we uh, forecasted or a model that what we need to do is scale up our treatment from 50,000 patients uh, in the days of the interferon therapy to uh, reach 350,000 patients annually treated, uh, ongoing until 2030. So we need to increase diagnosis. We used to diagnose 100,000 patients a year. We need to increase diagnosis up to more than 350,000 so that we can treat these patients. And uh, imp very importantly, we need to decrease actively uh, infection, proactively uh, reduce infection. Uh, the Ministry of Health estimated that we had uh, between 120 and 160,000 new infections a year in 2014-15. Uh, this needs to decrease by 20% each year. And uh, the Ministry of Health set a uh, very comprehensive uh, prevention uh, plan, and uh, pro probably Manel will discuss this uh, tomorrow. She was uh, the lead uh, organizer for the uh, prevention plan for the Ministry of Health at that time. So uh, in, in brief, to eliminate the disease, we, we need to treat 3.75 million patients to reach 2% prevalence, and we need to treat around 5 million patients to reach less than 1% uh, prevalence. During uh, any, any period of time, the politicians sometimes say that we are going to get rid of hepatitis C within five years, two years. So this is the number we need to treat within the period that they, they want to eliminate hepatitis C in. Uh, our resources are very limited. This is the uh, health expenditure per capita in Egypt is less than $300 a year. And almost 60% uh, is out of pocket. Only 39% is uh, government expenditure. And if we compare this to our host country here in the Netherlands, uh, the per capita expenditure is almost $6,000, and uh, only 20% is out of pocket, and 80% is government. So the resources are very limited. And we had to uh, improvise or find ways to uh, be able to treat uh, the patients. We negotiated prices uh, when the direct-acting antivirals first came uh, suitable for genotype 4, 
And uh, the, our first deal was with Gilead. We, we negotiated their, uh, with their access plan, the price down to $900 for a 12-week uh, supply. Uh, and actually, uh, with this deal with Gilead, this set the bar for other countries and other products, and they all came at lower prices. So uh, with this uh, price, we were able to treat uh, a, few, a few thousand patients, probably 50 to 60,000 patients. And then in 2016, uh, genetics were licensed in Egypt. And uh, the genetics came at very, very low prices. Now a 12-week supply of uh, treatment costs the government $80 uh, or $82 exactly. Uh, w without these reduction in costs, we would not have been able to treat the number of patients that I'm going to show you. And this shows the initial uh, price in different countries. Uh, all prices have gone down, but uh, in Egypt now we're around $80 for a 12-week supply of sovospavir plus uh, daclatazvir. Uh, our national treatment program had started in 2006 and was based on interferon. And in Egypt, we uh, set specialized hepatitis C treatment centers. Patients with hepatitis C to be treated on the expense of the government had to go to specialized centers uh, managed by uh, hepatologists or, or gastroenterologists. When we started the uh, treatment program in uh, 2014, there were 26 centers. However, the number of patients waiting to be treated was beyond the capacity of all these centers. We anticipated at that time that there were, that were uh, uh, 300,000 patients who were not treated with interferon, uh, were interferon ineligible because we did not treat patients with cirrhosis with interferon. Uh, 150,000 who had failed interferon treatment because the response rate was between 30 and 45 percent, and 500,000 living with the diagnosis. So we, we anticipated that there were close to a million patients waiting to start treatment, and we had to devise uh, methods to uh, streamline patients for evaluation and treatment. Uh, the National Committee de developed a web-based uh, appointment management system where all patients uh, registered on the internet and get, uh, got appointments uh, as close to their uh, living uh, where they live as possible. And these are the number of patients who registered within the first uh, month, 550,000 patients registered within the first month, including 100,000 patients registered on the first day when the uh, site became active. And actually, it took six months to treat these 550,000 patients. These are the number of patients treated or starting treatment each month when the program started. And uh, the first six months, uh, we treated the first 500,000 patients. So there was a huge backlog of patients needing. Sometimes patients uh, waited for more than seven months for their first appointment. And uh, this caused a huge uh, logistic uh, problem. Initially, there was a very limited supply of medication. Gilead had uh, made available only uh, 50,000 patients in the first uh, period. So we had to uh, prioritize patients with advanced to treatment to patients with advanced fibrosis, F3 and F4. We started to evaluate fibrosis by fibro scans, and then there were not enough fibro scan machines to do all these fibro scans, and then we had to do without the fibro scans and uh, diagnose uh, fibrosis by a FIP4 test. Then, with more availability, uh, six months later, we uh, decided to treat all stages of fibrosis. So, in 2015, mid 2015, Egypt became the first country that uh, treated all stages of fibrosis, regardless uh, of, from F0 to F4. And in December uh, 2015, with the availability of genetics, we were able to scale up uh, treatment uh, very uh, rapidly. Uh, so currently, uh, there are uh, 65 or slightly more than 65 centers all over Egypt treating patients with hepatitis C. Uh, plus, the health insurance organization has 80 specialized centers for hepatitis C. Uh, the centers are the geographically distributed. We evaluated, until today, 1.5 million uh, patients. 
and uh, around 1.4 million have started treatment. These are uh, the drug combinations that are being used or that were used for the 1.4 million patients initially, sovospovir and ribavirin and sovospovir interferon and ribavirin in 2014, early 2015, uh, only 12% of the patients. Currently, generic sovospovir daclatazvir uh, is, uh, ha have been uh, used by almost 80% of the patients. So this is the main uh, combination used in the program. Adherence is very high, and this is because treatment is fully funded by the state. Patients don't pay for treatment. They don't pay for investigations. Uh, the, train, the staff are very uh, experienced. However, we have a, a very big problem with uh, compliance with reporting SVR. Patients complete treatment, finish treatment, and they don't come back three months later to report their SVR. They have their tests done uh, somewhere else and they don't come back to report it. So this is one of the problems that we have to solve. Uh, as uh, I said, reimbursement, uh, almost 90% of uh, patients are fully reimbursed. Only 10% choose to be treated out of pocket. Uh, they have the right to be treated on the expense of the state, but 10% uh, of the patients choose to be treated in private practice. These are uh, the different combinations, uh, costs, numbers, 1.4 million. The total cost was almost 3 point, uh, 385,000 uh, US dollars. If this was, uh, if we patients were treated in Europe with this amount of money, only 15,000 patients would have been treated. So we treated 1.38 million, uh, uh, 1 million 385,000 more patients with the same amount of money because of uh, access and because of genetics. If it was not for the cheap genetics, we would not have been able to uh, treat these patients. This is the outcome uh, of the different uh, drug combinations used. This is the outcome of the genetics, more than 96%, 97% response rate. So they actually, they work. And uh, of almost 95% of the 1.4 million patients were cured. However, there are some challenging challenges uh, facing uh, the program. Um, can we continue at this rate? Uh, probably not. The main challenge facing the program now is finding patients. As uh, Jordan said in his first uh, presentation, we, we were uh, running out of patients. We treated the patients who were living with the diagnosis, and we have to start looking for patients. These are the number of patients starting treatment. It's, it's decreasing. The first uh, three years, we treated almost 1.4 of the 1.5 million patients who were, were living with the diagnosis. New registration have dropped from uh, 300,000 the first week to less than 2,000 per week now. So uh, we probably this year we will not find more than 100, 150,000 patients to treat. Uh, the Ministry of Health started a screening program. Uh, they are screening uh, in persons or individuals at entry points to the government services when they, uh, they get a driver's license, uh, national ID, and so on. But these are all in the young age group where the prevalence is very low and the yield is very low. This is the age group that the government is currently screening. So to find a patient, this will cost around uh, $65. However, uh, we, we think that screening should be targeted at the other end of the age spectrum, where screening will be most cost effective, and to find the patient will cost only $5 or 5 to $6 instead of $60. $60. And then the other challenge is the cost of diagnostics, as the previous speaker uh, just uh, showed. Uh, diagnostics now are uh, more uh, expensive than the treatment. It, it costs more to do the repeated PCR tests than uh, the 12 weeks of treatment. So uh, there are no genetics for diagnostics. There are no locally manufactured diagnostics. And the prices of diagnostics have gone up in Egypt because of the devaluation. So this is uh, a problem. 
we have to simplify our diagnostic testing plan and probably we will have to replace uh, the PCR testing by core antigen or something uh, when these become available. And we, we need to develop local uh, diagnostic tests or uh, local companies should develop diagnostic tests. So in summary, uh, what contributed to the success of the program was that, number one, we faced the problem. There was a huge societal and social pressure on the government to uh, adopt treatment for hepatitis C on the expense of the state. Uh, this was supported by political will uh, recently in the last few years. The infrastructure was there when the direct acting antivirals came because of the previous interferon program. Uh, we were able to negotiate mass purchase prices with different companies, including the genetics. And if it was not for the low cost of genetics, we would not have been able to achieve this. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the members of the National Committee uh, who, who worked in planning and uh, supervising this work. And thank you for your attention.